I like to come and have a legal, a legal you know, advice because first of all, I'm not practicing lawyer. I make me smart, commission on human rights, and I'm interested in justice. But by, you know, I deal with disability rights most of the time because I'm also a person with disability. My own being cyber policy. Ajua Amponsa Dapa, legal advisor, Shraj speaking. My first relapse had to do with the cancellation of the examination, which I have prepared so much for. When I came back to reality, I realized I was in a psychiatric home. I felt very bad. There was no hope for the future anymore. And that was how I was living until um, basic needs came in. They began by giving us livelihood support and then buying our medications for us. They have to build our capacities as persons with the conditions so that we can be able to speak, fight for our rights, influence advocacy, direction and policies. Martha Kofi, advocate of mental health, speaking. I wasn't born a deaf person, I was born hearing. At the age of five or six, I became deaf. So I went to the Kopon School for the Deaf. Later on, we came to know about the Deaf Association that is NAD. NAD did a lot of encouragement, a lot of programs for deaf women, capacity building, which I actually partook in. Patricia Baffle, trader. She is voiced by her male sign language interpreter. I'm with Youth Employment Agency, and I'm the head for gender and disability at the Central Municipal Assembly. Ruth Bwachi Adam, head, gender and disability, GAM Municipal Assembly speaking. International Women's Day 2022. Women with disabilities face double everything that the general woman faces when it comes to employment, education, reproductive health care and services, um, stigma and discrimination. Working woman in Ghana with a disability is quite tough. One meaning that I'm a woman, and one the other mean meaning that I have a disability. So, you know, it's like, I'm fighting to battle at the same time. So working in Ghana with a disability <laughs> it's quite um, it's quite a battlefield I would say. Sometimes I don't know but it looks like they, they link your disability, you being a physically disabled person with your brain. And that's really I don't know, something else. Because of your disability, people already look down upon you without not looking at what you possess, your capacity, your qualification. Some other challenges that um, persons with disability, especially women face, is that you know when they have their own jobs too, people don't really want to buy from them because they think that buying from deaf people might you know have some kind of implications on them. Most of the working um, environment, they are so not disability friendly, especially where I, I'm working right now. We are on the first floor, so I asked that they do something about it. When I actually mentioned it, they thought of transferring me. When I finished university, beautiful girl, you know, had a good class. I happened to go to one of these top banks. A man made a statement. He said, Sebi, you ain't come by, you won't nine in San Quentin. A human in your year be not what Sebi, where did them? It is not that um, we didn't have the expertise. My society has made it such that there is no room for us to even take care of ourselves. Because I passed through what society required me to work. But yet, for them to give me the opportunity, 
<laughs> do the gender equality, you know, equal opportunity. Those are good on the book and paper. But in actual sense, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. People think that, quote unquote, once you are a person with a deformity or a disability, it means you are not supposed to enjoy things that persons with no disability do enjoy. So you have a mental health condition and they are like, how could you be in a relationship? How could you get yourself pregnant? How can you be married? Let me give you a typical example of the barrier. I was in the university and I got pregnant. And the first thing an uncle said was, oh, she was raped. You get it. Women with disabilities are seen as being without, without, without even, you know, having a sexual feeling or being sexually attractive for any so-called normal person to see me and want to have the intimacy with me. My just ended relationship, they actually rejected me because of my disability. We were going to do the marriage right and everything. He gave me money for both the engagement and the wedding. King Tay. It was even a week to my birthday actually. The dad told the son, why would he go in for somebody like me? If he goes ahead with the marriage, he shouldn't step foot at his funeral and rain curses on him, etc. Yes, this particular deaf person in, I think, the Eastern region, deaf woman gave birth to a, a beautiful baby girl. And their parents, instead of you know helping the deaf lady to take care of the baby, they rather took the, the baby away from the, the deaf woman, you know, with the perception that because she's a deaf person, she can't take care of her own daughter. They, they have this perception that um, with them, and so Yankai won Kanipa, Yankanipa, you are not part of them. Speaking from the perspective of a person with a mental health condition, our educational system is not very inclusive. Talk about the inclusive education policy and you get to know that as a person living with a mental health condition going through school, you have to have flexible time to be able to compete with your other colleagues without disabilities. And this is what our educational system does not offer all throughout from the very basic education to the tertiary. We've realized that the government mostly is focused on the hearing community, giving them a lot of information. But when it comes to persons with disability, we are left out when it comes to all this information that is out there. So government should provide us with funds, you know, that will be used to educate the deaf community on important matters. There should be education in general, wouldn't it? Whereby we know that you know, in, in, in our society, we have differences. We have differences. So that we embrace each other with our differences. Refresher training should be given to people in institutions that have the means to make change to policies and then offer services for persons in general so that women with disability can also be included. I don't get why I have to fight for what it's my, I'm a human being, and my virtue of being a human being, I should enjoy the basic fundamental in my life. Special thanks to Martha Kofi, Patricia Baffo, Ajwa Amponsadapa, Ruth Bwache Yadom. Ghana Somubi Jumedie, funded by UK Aid from the British people. A Vessel Media Production for Ghana Somubi Jumedi.